Our guest needs no introduction. He has been around the world and back. He is the last of the hardcore legends, Abdullah the Butcher. Welcome for joining us here today. Wait a minute, I want to meet my manager, Anish Khan. I want you to talk to him first. Okay, uh, Anish Khan, um, how did you first meet Abdul the Butcher? First, let me say this. He's not the last, he's the first. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Abdullah the Butcher. And from now on, when you ask him a question, you say Mr. Honest John, because he is honest. Okay, Mr. Honest John. Okay. Uh, now, Abdullah, uh, how did you break into the business? I broke into the business 42 years ago. I was teaching uh, karate and judo. And a promoter seen me and he, he liked what I'd done. He asked me, he says, how would you to be a wrestling, a wrestler? Okay, that's how I got to do it. Now, um, was that uh, Gino Brito or was that uh, Jack Brito? It was Gino Brito. Gino Brito, right. okay. And uh, how long did you train before you became a professional? Uh, I knew a lot about the wrestling business. I knew a lot about it. Wrestling and karate and judo is pretty much the same thing, but I took it to a step further. You see? Okay. That's when I uh, started uh, beating people with chairs and forks and whatever came, whatever I could uh, grab my hands on. Okay. Now, um, how was the training regimen? Was it difficult? Pardon? Training regimen? Training to be a wrestler? I didn't train. Okay, you didn't I didn't train. train. Okay. No. Okay. Now, um, where did you first start? Where in Canada did you first start? I didn't start in Canada. Okay. I started in Detroit, Michigan. Okay, you started in Detroit. Yeah. Okay. I, were, I, uh, I was working for Jack Britton and uh, Bert Ruby. Okay. Yes. In Detroit, Michigan. Okay. Is that where you first met uh, the Sheik? Yes. First time I met the Sheik was in Detroit. Okay. And what was your uh, initial impressions of him? Uh, I liked the Sheik. Uh, but I did not, I, his style, I liked it, but I'd done it better than him. All right. Okay. So would you say he was one of uh, your influences, I guess, in terms of your style or? Yes. Okay. I liked his style. Okay. Is there anyone else? Uh, as far as any other workers that influenced your style, maybe you took a little bit from that one. And, no, no, and no, 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 no. All right. No. Uh, now, uh, what are your memories of your debut match? I worked with uh, Crook Strohan. He was a, a German, and uh, that was my first victory. And I wrestled. Um, Well, it's been a long time. I can't remember. All right. <laughs> now, um, you then uh, ended up in Canada. What, when was the first year you uh, started in, in Canada? I was in, I was in Boston. Okay, you went to Boston before? I that. went to Boston. I was with uh, Tony Santos. Tony Santos, and that's when I met the, 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 the famous uh, Jack Pfeffer. All right, Jack yeah. Pfeffer. What were your impressions of him? He was a smart man. Every promoter was scared of him <laughs> because he took names and changed them, just made them a little different. All right. See. Now, who was it that uh, gave you your name, Abdul the Butcher? How did that come about? I was in Vancouver. I was in Seattle, Washington. When I was in Seattle, Washington, I started um, uh, I was working with somebody, and then um, I caused a riot. And then the promoter ran down there real fast and said, um, tell Abdullah, uh, to slow it down. Tell him to slow it down. Tell him to slow it down. But I couldn't slow it down. I got worse. Then when I came out of the ring, the people were booing, Put her head a riot, 
and he come running into the dressing room. He said, you're like a goddamn butcher. <laughs> so when he said Abdullah, Abdullah the butcher. Then Rod Fenton, that was his partner. Then that's from now on that's where it went. Okay. So, now, would you say you, you get into a zone when you're you're in the ring? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. A lot of times when I'm in the ring, I don't know what I'm doing. Cause I come out and uh, people say, "Oh, you done this," but number one, I have to psych myself out first before I do anything. You see. So you so basically um, you just simply call it in the ring. Is that basically how? Call what? In terms of you don't you just. Go at it and, and uh, I go at it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So basically, the I don't talk to nobody. Okay. I don't talk to nobody. Not even in the ring. No, sir. Okay. I do what I have to do. Uh, would you say your your um, your style um, has influenced your relationship with promoters and bookers in I guess a, both a positive and maybe mainly a, a negative way in terms of uh, maybe mistrust or. What I done, they're trying to do it now. Okay. In New York, they're trying to do it now. What I done a long time ago and still doing it, they're trying to do it. I see. See okay. what I mean? So. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, you had uh, many legendary feuds in uh, Canada. Uh, you you uh, feuded with uh, Ivan Koloff. Uh, what are your memories of, of that? Good fights. Very, Koloff was a very good fighter. He was one of the best bump takers uh, in the wrestling business. He could go so high, it was unbelievable. Yep. Um, and you also uh, were in uh, a tag team with uh, Dr. Jerry Graham. What are your memories of that? Now that was hell. <laughs> that was hell. When I say hell, I went through hell. Okay. With Dr. Jerry Graham. Okay. Tough to work with. No, he was a tough worker to work with, but it was it was okay. him. Yeah, I've okay. I've I've heard stories about yeah. uh, Dr. Jerry Graham. Well his stories I don't want I don't want to <laughs> I don't care what stories he done, what he done, I'm just saying it was him. Okay. Um, but at that time I, uh, you were feuding with uh, the Tolos brothers, Chris and yes, John. Chris, yes. And uh, what did you think of the way uh, John Tolos worked? His, his style. They were great workers. Okay. They're were, they were the only ones who had the Kirk screw. Mm -hmm. You know, they put the. Yeah. yeah. They were good workers. Mm -hmm. Good wrestlers. Uh, what about the assassins? Tom Minesta and Jody Hampton. They were, uh, in my in my opinion, they were the number one uh, tag teams. Tom Minesta's dead now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, later on, you teamed with uh, Armand Hussein, and you feuded with uh, Don Leo Jonathan in tag team matches. What are your memories of that? Don Leo Jonathan was a, a great, great athlete. Armand Hussein, uh, I bought him in from um, L.A. Uh, to team up with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how Armand was a, a good worker, a good wrestler. Mm -hmm. But we had good matches with Don Leo Jonathan, Patty Barrett, mm -hmm. and Les Thornton. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And uh, you've also wrestled uh, Luthez. What are your memories of, of that? I wrestled, <coughs> I wrestled Les, Les Luthez. I'll say Mr. Luthez, because he was, a, in my opinion, he was a gentleman. I wrestled him in Vancouver in the Big Dome. Okay. We sold it out, and the people, the wrestlers came to me and said, tonight, you're gonna get your ass whooped. You're gonna get your ass whooped tonight, right? So, I went out there and done what I had to do. I didn't beat him and he didn't beat me. It was a double DQ. But he was a, a professional, knew this. Okay. Um. So you would say you basically had uh, mutual respect for each other? Oh, yes. That match. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until the day he died, I always liked Luthes. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I went to, uh, when I went to, uh, to, the, to, to Kuwait, Israel, when I went to Israel, and when I went to Kuwait, uh, he made sure I got my money. 
you know. At that time, he was the booker. Okay. Okay, and um, now what did what did you uh, think of Dino Bravo? He he also worked as uh, he was uh, promoted with Gino Brito there in uh, Vancouver. Not Vancouver. I'm sorry, Montreal. 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 I'm sorry. Well, number one, the way that was supposed to be, Gino Brito and myself, and uh, Dino Bravo, the Giant, and the Giant's manager, we were supposed to be a group. A group. But when things started going, they moved me out. I see. Yeah. Okay. You got bumped out of it. Okay. Um, we also feuded with... Uh, let me see here. Uh, later on, actually, you, you fitted with Billy Robinson when you were in uh, Stampede. Great matches, great matches. Mm -hmm. Hell of a worker. He was, uh, he was, he was a true wrestler and a shooter. Mm -hmm. He was good. What did you think of uh, Stu Hart as a promoter and of the territory? I love Stu Hart. Stu Hart to me was like a friend and a father. Stu Hart to me, uh, he had a good little territory, and uh, even today I respect Stu Hart. Okay. Um, what What are your memories of your first tour of Japan? Well, the promoter asked me to uh, Charlie Moto. They wanted me to go into Japan. The first time I went to Japan. The people never seen nothing like me. I made everybody crazy. When I left, by the time I got back home in Canada, there was a, a phone call. Tell Abdullah to call us right away. Mm -hmm. I called him right away. They said, we went, back to, we went back to the following tour. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. But when I used to go to Japan, there wasn't many big names. It's all, only guys underneath. And I had to do it all myself. I see. see? Yeah. yeah. Now, what promotion was this for? All Japan. Oh, well, this was all yeah. Japan in its initial stages? Giant Baba. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, so you never worked for JWA? What's JWN? That was uh, with Anoki, when Anoki and uh, Baba were together? Yes, I was with them too. Okay. Then okay. they made the split. Okay, oh, so you were with JWA? I was okay. There, yeah. okay. And, and how would you compare JWA to. Uh, when they split to the separate companies? They were both good companies. Okay. Enoki had his group and Bob had his group. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. What made you decide to go with Baba? It's a long story. Okay. I don't mention it. Okay. Now, um, But Enoki is a great promoter. Uh, Baba was a great promoter. And I think you're going to see a lot more of Enoki. Okay. Even in the United States. Okay. Do you think he's, uh, do you think Anoki's misunderstood by uh, modern fans, by current day fans? Misunderstood in terms of his influence, maybe? Uh, uh, because some people think that he's out of date in terms of his, his way of thinking and booking. Uh, that he has, you know, he sometimes has some strange ideas. Is he still drawing people? As far as I know, yeah. So, <laughs> he can't be outdated. Yeah, absolutely. When absolutely. you're drawing people, then you're not outdated. Yeah. People are going to talk about you anyways. They're going to say, he's doing this here. That's blah, 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 blah. Yeah. you got to realize something. I've been in the business 42 years. Yeah. I've seen it change. Yeah. And I've, I've seen them come and I've seen them go. Yeah. I've seen promoters go under. Yeah. And I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, they, Basically, I think the main reason they criticize him is because uh, New Japan now has trouble drawing in, in Tokyo, which is, you know, basically the, in the main city they have trouble drawing in there. Number one, mm -hmm. you have to give the people something. Yeah. You can't have guys flying all over. One guy throws a lariat, the next guy throws a lariat. One guy goes to the top rope, gives the guy a suplex. The next match comes, he does the same thing, same thing, same yeah. thing. And the people go, oh, we just seen that, we just seen that. Yeah. See, a long time ago, when you had guys like Calhoun, you had guys like The Beast, George Steele, you had all these guys, they were different. Okay. 
you never seen George Steele take a big bump, or you never seen uh, uh, in a match where a guy threw 30 or 40 drop kicks? Yeah. You never seen a guy go to the top rope? You seen Dick DeBruce go to the top rope, drop his, his leg across somebody's throat, and they carried him on the stretcher? Yeah. You see? Oh, absolutely. I, I agree yeah. that they, less is more, and everything they did basically Give meant. the people what you want. Yeah. You see, it's like when they had the Blues Brothers. I love the Blues Brothers. Dr. Detroit. I used to watch it over and over and over and over again. Then all of a sudden, I says, I, oh, I've seen that before. I've seen it. Well, he's going to do this. He's going to do... Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same thing. Yeah, something different. Uh, that brings us to a good point. Um, in terms of, I'm just going to name some names of, as far as uh, your contemporaries of, that were known for, I guess, what's now known as the hardcore style, and you tell me what you think of them. Tiger Jeet Singh? Good. Okay. Uh, Pampero Furpro? Good. Uh, we just mentioned them, uh, Georgie Animal Steel? Right. Okay. Um, what about uh, Mark Lewin uh, at his size? doing that uh, kind of style? Mark Lewin was not hardcore. Okay. They used to call him Maniac yeah. Mark Lewin. But what did he really do? Yeah. That's you see what I mean? He, he was not hardcore. He wrestled and, you know, yeah. that's it. Okay. Now, um, talk about King Curtis. King Curtis. Okay. You see? Yeah. He was hardcore. Yeah. He's the one who started out with, us, us. He's the one who started it all. Yeah. You see what I mean? Now, uh, what are your memories of uh, your first tour of Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico? I loved it. Okay. Uh, Packed houses. Stan Hansen was there. Uh, Bruiser Brody was there. Myself. Mm -hmm. We packed. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of Carlos Colon? I like Carlos. Mm -hmm. I like him. Mm -hmm. I would never double cross them and go for no other go for no other company. Yeah. If they're in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Yeah. Um, since uh, it's it's kind of an up uh, current uh, uh, current uh, piece of news, but uh, what do you think is the reason that Carlos Colon has lost his uh, stranglehold on Puerto Rico? Uh, his grip, I should say, uh, with WWC and now IWA with Victor Kionis is on top. What do you think he did wrong? What do you mean? Uh, as far as I know, IWA Puerto Rico is now the number one company in Puerto Rico. Who? Uh, Victor Kionis. I can't, yeah, I wouldn't say that. Okay. Carlos draws, they draw. Sometimes Carlos don't draw, they don't draw. Okay. Who's getting the top ratings? Mm -hmm. Carlos Colon's uh, company. Okay. You see? Mm -hmm. But... It's a, there are two companies mm. trying to fight against each other. Mm. Somebody who's been there for a long time, you can't remove them. Yeah, that's true. Is it me? I think that's been proven with Vince McMahon. That's right. Yeah. Um, now, when, what is, uh, when was the first time you met Bruiser Brody? Uh, I met Bruiser Brody in Japan. Uh, King Curtis told me to take care of him. Okay. He came to Japan. Okay. That's how we met. Uh, what did you? Th what were your initial impressions of him? He was a professional. Okay. He didn't take no shit from no promoter or nothing. Mm. All right. Did you try to give him some pointers in that regard, or he was already uh, in that mindset? Oh, he knew. The... Okay, he, he knew. knew. Okay. Uh, what about the first time you met uh, the Funk Brothers, Dory Jr. and uh, Terry? What? Uh, what are your memories of? What were your initial I was, in Sydney, I was in Sydney, Australia, and Dory Funk Jr. asked me, please, Abdullah, we want you to come into the territory. I says, uh, he said, we can, I said, wait a minute. If I pop your territory, then we talk money. I went into his territory and popped it. Yeah. What do you mean? In Amarillo? Amarillo, Texas. Amarillo. Okay. Uh, so you also met, of course, uh, Dory Sr., the father? No, I never met the father. Oh, you never met but the father. But the father called me to come in. Okay. So the main brother of Sydney Australia doing Oh, it. okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So by the time you got there, he had passed yeah. away. Okay. Okay. And um, what what are your feelings on on um, on Terry as far as how he's been able to last? What do you think is Terry Funk is a professor. I mean, he's a professor. He's 
Terry Funk can do anything what he wants to do. You know what I mean? When I say yeah. anything, when he had the world's championship belt, I think he made more money than anybody else with that world's championship belt. Wow. Because he was a different champion. Yes. So I mean, everybody else was clean champions. Terry Funk, to me, was one of the best champions for his style and the way he had everybody doing what he wanted them to do. Would you say that uh, he's a, uh, he's he's been ahead of his time in terms of the way he's, he's thinking and, and uh, you know because he's he's come up with a lot of ideas that uh, he's mentioned things that later on twenty years down the line people actually thought of doing it after. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a professional. He's good. Terry's good. I like Terry. Always did like Terry. Mm -hmm. Fought him many times, but I like Terry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking, speaking of Terry and Dory, uh, what are your memories of uh, your series, uh, yourself and the Sheik feuding with the Funks in uh, Japan? It was the best. That was the best. Yeah. The best. We tore the houses down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those were good matches. They were all good matches. Every match we had was a good match. Yeah. Would you say that um, you and uh, Terry's mentioned this himself, that uh, what uh, Bring the hardcore style to Japan. As far as in all Japan, it was uh, it was started in '76 when you two had a singles match. He's, he's, that's that's actually the era that I, I refer to as the romping and reeling days when when it was getting a little wilder in terms of all Japan. It was wild when I first went there. Okay. <laughs> I made it wild. Okay. You see what I mean? Yes. Then uh, when Terry came in, then it was it was really wild. Yeah. Was he, oh yeah. Tiger Jit Singh, all of them. Yeah. Uh, did you have a hard time at all working with uh, Dory Jr. because he kind of had a very dry style about him? Dory Funk Jr. is a professional. Okay. He's a. Dory Funk Jr. can go on the match and have a slow match, and when he's finished, he got the people standing. Oh, absolutely. His style was different. It's like Luthez. Luthez's style was different. Uh, what's his name from England? Uh, Billy Robinson. Billy Robinson was his different style. See what I mean? Yeah. Uh, these guys were professionals. Mm -hmm. They were the. They were the, to me. They were one of the greatest wrestlers mm -hmm. for the wrestling business. Okay. They could wrestle. Yes. See, a lot of guys who. Like myself, I can't wrestle. I'm a brawler. You understand? Mm -hmm. These guys, I give respect. Mm -hmm. Don Leo, John, and all these guys, I give respect. Uh, would you add to that list uh, Jack and Jerry Briscoe? Yes, yes. They are professionals. Mm -hmm. These guys know how to wrestle, mm -hmm. and you don't have you don't know have you don't have too many people know how to wrestle. Absolutely. These guys are professional. They can grab a hold, stay there, and do whatever they want mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is it? Uh, did you think Jumbo Saruta, when you first met him, would be as big a legend or a star that he that he ended up becoming? Oh, I know he's going to be a big star. Yeah. That was the new generation. Yeah. Is the, would you say he was a natural in terms of uh, the way he... The Funks trained him. Yeah. And the Japanese trained him, but the Funks took him in the arm row, kept him there for a year or whatever they kept him there for, and they pushed him and pushed him and pushed him. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, Genichiro Tenru? Who? Tenru? Tenru's good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Uh, when he first came into uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Tenru was good. Yeah. Um, I remember seeing a match, uh, maybe you recall, in 79 or 80. Uh, he was wrestling Austin Idol, and I think he started shooting on him. Do you remember anything of that? In Georgia? Do you remember anything about Who? that? Uh, Tenru? He just kind of got upset with Idol. You, were you there at the time? Who started shooting on him? Tenry started shooting on Idol. With Austin shots. Idol? Yeah, an Austin Idol. Nah, I don't you know. Don't, okay, you don't recall that. Okay. Right. Speaking of Georgia, what are your memories of Georgia Championship Wrestling? I loved it. Mm -hmm. I loved it. How was Ole Anderson? Ole Anderson was good to me. It was all right. Okay. I used to tell Ole, Ole, people say that I don't like you. I like you. But you know what it is? I can't let you take all the money. <laughs> Absolutely. 
I guess I'll jump around in terms of uh, okay, since you've worked. Yes, go ahead. Okay. He's always doing the last minute thing. Yeah. I, I don't mean any disrespect him. Yeah, no, I know that. House of Ribs and Chinese Food in Atlanta, Georgia. Our food is number one. Everybody from all over coming to Atlanta, Georgia, they stop off at my place. Can you see the card, young man? You sure? You got the telephone number down there? Yes, I do. 404-629-2332. You got good eyes, young man, good eyes. Thank you very much. Come and visit me. Come and see me. Talk to me. What else you want to know? Okay. Absolutely. All right. Uh, what did you, uh, memories of uh, Southwest Championship Wrestling with the Blanchards? Southwest? With who? Uh, the Blanchards. Oh. Uh, Joe and Tully Blanchard. Oh, I liked it. Okay. I liked it. Mm -hmm. I never knock a promotion. Okay. Mm -hmm. If it was bad or good, I would still say it was good. All right. <laughs> Let's me know for future reference. Uh, what about world class uh, championship wrestling with the uh, Von Erichs? What, um, what are your memories of working the uh, the uh, Texas Stadium shows? Well, I think uh, Fritz Von Erich was the ref special referee with me and Brody, right? Yes, in the cage. In yeah. The yes. Yeah. It was a good match, but he wanted to get it. He wanted to get into the act. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, did you ever? Uh, you feuded with Fritz, of course. In, in Texas. No. You never did. No. I guess that's why. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, was there any specific territory where? Because you've worked Bruiser Brody in virtually all over the world. Yes. Was there a specific territory where you most enjoyed working him in? Puerto Rico, Japan. Puerto Rico, and yeah. Japan. Then we went to we went to Israel. Mm. We fought over there. Mm. Mm. Then we went to the Middle East. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what territory have you most enjoyed as far as in the states? Any place where I can make money. Put <laughs> <laughs> me money. Absolutely. Now, uh, uh, what are your memories of? Uh, the Stomper Archie Golden, you know, jumping back to Calvary. Good worker, very good. I drew a lot of money with Archie Goldie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Archie Goldie Stomper. Good, uh, good professional. Okay. How many NWA World Champions have you worked? I'm, I'm assuming you've worked a plethora. <laughs> I don't even count them no more. Okay. Uh, you've count. worked Flair for the title, or you've only worked him? Flair would never fight me for the title. We could have drew a lot of money with that title, me and Flair. Absolutely. But we never, never, we never worked. Do you, do you know if there's any specific reason or do you, anything you could think of? 
I'm an outlaw. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, because I guess since the promoters felt they couldn't control you, is that's that it. Yeah. They couldn't control me. Yeah. Now, um, what? Uh, I work with, with I work with uh, Dory Funk Jr. in Calgary, Alberta. When he's the world's champion, we sold out everything for two weeks straight. Uh, what about uh, Tony Atlas? You worked him in Georgia. Yeah. What are your? What are, Tony was a good wrestler. Yeah. Him and uh, his partner uh, Tommy Rich. They were, yeah, they were known yeah, as assaulted. They, they were good wrestlers. Yeah. Uh, do you think that uh, when when uh, Georgia was taken over by uh, by the, by Crockett that they didn't really capitalize on uh, the popularity of Tommy Rich? It's a long story. Okay. Let's don't get into stories. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll just jump around. As, um, memories of your feud with the destroyer Dick Byer for the All Japan U.S. title. Love working with him. Love wrestling him. He was a good wrestler. He was a, a professional. He was. He was like uh, you can put him in in the same cat category with the Funks and with uh, uh, Kowalski and him. Okay. Um, now, how is? Uh, I guess I'll list several different names uh, that have. I guess died in, in the last year or two, um, and if you can tell me, I guess, a little bit of uh, how it's affected you, maybe. Um, Giant Baba? Me and Giant Baba was, we fought a lot of times, but we were good friends. I'm the one who made his company. Yeah. And uh, if I would have been if I would know what I know now, I would own some of the company. Okay. You understand? Uh, when Giant Baba died, we were friends for many, many years. I've done a lot of stuff for him, bought him with a lot of people. They didn't invite me or Terry Funk to the funeral. Wow. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. talk to me. Okay. Uh, what about uh, the Sheik? Well, me and the Sheik was... Good friends, but the Sheik used to say Abdullah took my gimmick. If I took it, I made it better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So So there was, a, I guess, a little bit of a professional jealousy or rivalry? Not with me. No, not on your not part, maybe. Okay. And the uh, one who takes his place is Sabu. Sabu's a hell of a, a, hell of a performer mm -hmm. when he works with me. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you think he's he's uh, taken way too many risks in terms of now he's pretty banged up now? He's trying to do what he has to do. It might kill him, but he wants to be the best. Absolutely. He wants to do things what nobody else can do or they're scared to do. Okay. Okay. Uh, Fred Blassie? Fred Blassie, I've been knowing Fred for many, many years, and I've, I've, I've always liked Blassie. He was a Money maker, mm -hmm. draw. Did you ever get to work with him personally? Did you? Ever? No. 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 I, I, would, would you say that's one of your regrets, not being able to work with him? I would love to work with Blassie. Yeah. I'd love to work with him. Yeah. yeah. Every uh, time I used to see him uh, when he was doing autograph something, mm. yeah, I'd walk in and he'd say, "Oh no, Abdullah the Butcher, hey, how are you?" You know, he was a good man. I like I like Blassie. Uh, what about uh, Kentaro Oki? Who? Oki? Yeah, he was mostly from, uh, he was a big star in Korea, but he was in all Japan. He used to do mostly headbutts. Oki Kentaro? Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, I should Head pronounce butt. it the other Head way. So, yeah. Oki Kentaro. Okay. I just left him. Um, he had a big uh, birthday party and I flew in for his birthday party. Mm -hmm. uh, Samson Katsuwada? Who? Uh, Samson Kutsuwara? Samson? Yeah. It's no. a long story. Okay. No stories. I remember. Um, okay. I guess we're going to be jumping around. Um, how did the death of Bruiser Brody affect you? Mm -hmm. Bruiser Brody. How did that his death affect you? It's a long story. I don't want to okay, No stories. Um, how, okay, without maybe going into too much of a story here. Uh, invader number one, how did your relationship change with him after? It never death changed. Person? It never changed? He never Just, done nothing to me. Okay. So uh, why should it change? Okay. That was between them. All right. Okay. 
Okay. Um, were you were you actually in the territory at the time? I was there. You were okay. Yeah. I've heard a lot of different stories. Uh, Tony Atlas has mentioned uh, he was there, right there when when uh, Brody was stabbed. He didn't actually see it, but he was in the air. So, so how does he know? Okay. Well, from from if what he didn't see it, how do you know? Okay. But uh, do you know as far as if if you can mention it all as far as. Uh, do you know if Dutch Mantel was there at the time, uh, in the immediate vicinity when it occurred? No, because you had the hill room and you had the baby face okay, room. Okay, so they kept them separate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, what exactly happened that you never came into uh, New York for Vince to wrestle Hogan? I was supposed to come into, uh, into New York because I talked to the old man, Vince. Senior? And, yeah, senior in Japan. With, he was with Jim Barnett. And they were thinking about bringing me in, but I guess they, a lot of people knocked me. Mm -hmm. That's probably why I didn't hit New York. Mm -hmm. But it's just about everything is time. Okay. I might be in there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You see, it's up to it's up to Vince Senior. Uh, you mean Junior? Yeah, I'm a junior. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if it was up to Vince Senior, I think we'd all be in trouble. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Now, um, have you, you've spoken with Junior? No. You've never spoken with I him? I met him one time in Japan. No, I don't think I even talked to him. Wow, okay. Me and uh, Hogan was talking one time, and when when he started coming, I didn't want to interfere with their business, and I walked away. Okay. Uh, how would you compare, uh, I guess, uh, I know we mentioned this briefly, but how would you compare New Japan to uh, All Japan, your time in both promotions? It's the, it's the same shit. It's the same. <laughs> okay. Uh, you have guys leaving this office, going to that okay. office. You got guys going to this office, back to that office. Yeah, I was just jumping around. It's the okay. same routine all over. Absolutely. It's, everything is a what? A work. It's a work. Just show me, throw a couple of dollars at my way, and I'll be, I'll be over there. You see okay. what I mean? Okay. okay. Uh, did, you, did you know when you first met Hulk Hogan that he would become the star that he did? I met Hulk Hogan. I met Hulk Hogan in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, when he started. When Hogan was just Hogan. Yeah. And then when he made Rocky, uh, the... The Rocky II movie? Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. Then after that, he was on his way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I wrestled Hogan in uh, Tokyo. I think we sold out three weeks straight. Yes, I, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, what are your memories of uh, your matches with Stan Hansen? Good matches. Very good. Stan's another guy that I really like, mm -hmm. you know. Everybody tries to stay on top, but they never know when you've been there. Mm -hmm. I just want to say, mm -hmm. I don't care where I'm at, if I'm down here, mm -hmm. just keep paying me my same money. Mm -hmm. Let somebody else go up there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> so championships really didn't matter to you in that yeah. sense? No. no. Okay. Um, Put me on the first match. Yeah. And every time they put me on, other people couldn't follow my match. Yeah, anyway. I was going to say, yeah. So. It's probably the best reason to put you at the end. That's right. <laughs> That's now, did you ever, ever have any problems with uh, Stan Hansen because of his uh, eyesight problem? No. No? No. Okay. Because many people have mentioned the fear of getting hit with his lariat because of his... Uh... Everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you... Um, what are your memories of, I guess, some of the younger guys that were starting out in uh, the late 80s and became stars in the 90s in all Japan? Um, I'll just spit out names. Uh, Kawada? Good. Okay. Uh, Misawa? Good. All right. You're just going to keep saying good? They're all good. Yeah. All the Japanese wrestlers okay. are good. Okay. All the American wrestlers are good. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go to Africa. They're good. Go to India. They're all good. They're, they're all good. I'm not going to knock nobody. All right. I'm not looking for I'm you. Not gonna I'm not going to knock nobody who's making a living. No, I just... feed their family. I'm not looking for that at all. Okay. Um, did you ever see, though, any tension yourself personally between Misawa and Kawada? A tension? No, no. Uh, tension. Yes, tension between them. Was Or was that... Co uh, kept behind closed doors, sir. Okay. You see things, but I take the fifth commandments. Okay. Okay. What are your memories of your matches with uh, Kanek? 
You feel it was connected? Great matches. Mm -hmm. Very good matches. Mm -hmm. All the Mexican boys who I wrestled against were great matches. Mm -hmm. Even with uh, Mas Karras. Mm -hmm. Even with his son, or his brother, or his son, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Did, uh, how would you, I guess, how would you compare the fans from Mexico, I guess, to other areas, that you, other territories that you've worked? People in Mexico will kill you. <laughs> Worse than Puerto Rico, or? Yes. Wow, that, I think that's saying something. Yes. <laughs> because when you go into Mexico, you got all the toreo. It yeah. goes like this. Yes. And you got to come yeah. back to that way. <laughs> yeah. Difficulties with that. Um, who did you uh, most like working with in, in Mexico? Anybody. Anybody? Okay, nobody. Anybody who could work. Anybody? Okay. I'm assuming that would be everybody. Everybody. <laughs> they could work. Uh, what are your memories of, uh, you, man, you've had millions of managers basically, uh, your entire career. Um, I guess, how would you uh, compare some of them? Gary Hart, your relationship with him? Gary Hart was a manager. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He was a good manager. Rock Hunter was a good manager. Mm. Uh, Bearcat Wright okay. were managers. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Jerry Graham was my manager for a while. Okay. But the best manager is Honest John. Honest John. Mr. Honest John. Yes. Yes. Did you ever get to work with uh, Ray Stevens at all? Stevens? No. No. Okay. Bill Miller. Bill Miller. Okay. Dr. Bill Miller and his and his his partner. Okay. I worked with I worked with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> everybody. Yeah, I think if you looked up the dictionary of wrestling, I think you've wrestled yeah, just about okay. everybody. Um, now, have you ever wrestled um, in New York City for like Herb Abrams, UWF at all, or Herb Ab Herb? Yeah, UWF. Steve I Williams know, was there. I don't know if it was New York. Uh, I don't know. Okay. I wrestled someplace in New York, but my style at that time was was different, and they wasn't used to that style. Mm -hmm. Vince, I mean, they wasn't used to it. Yeah. Um, now, how would you compare, I guess, in Philadelphia, you worked for um, Joe Goodhart, uh, Tri-State Wrestling Alliance. How would you compare that to uh, ECW, if you can? Joe Goodhart, he used to run shows. And we used to talk. Say, Joe, you bring in one top name, you do what you have to do with him. Then, when things start to drop, you bring in another one. Yeah. Joe Goodhart was a good promoter. Okay. A very good promoter. He was packing places like it was going out of style. Yeah. But then he started bringing in everybody. Yes. When he started bringing in everybody, then you had what? Yeah, too much. You had the same shit. Same yeah, same shit. shit. Yeah. See what I mean? You yeah. can't have, you gotta have variety. Freaks. Yeah. You gotta have people looking like me. You gotta have fat people, skinny people. Like the circus, basically. You can't, that's it, the circus. You cannot have everybody who's got muscles. Yes. See what I mean? You gotta be different. Uh, do you think the mistake, I guess, is where you're leaning out with Joe Goodhart? He had too many of the hardcore wrestlers? Yeah. Uh. You can't have. You can't have everybody doing the same thing. Yes. Mm. Did it mean if you got women wrestlers and the women wrestlers are doing the same thing, why do you need uh, uh, more ra women wrestlers? Mm -hmm. You just got to see it. Mm -hmm. You just got to see a girl grab her hair or yes. try to pull her. Mm -hmm. See, you got the same thing. What, uh, what do you think is the reason that Todd Gordon and Paul Heyman were able to be more successful with ECW and have more longevity than Joe Goodhart? Because they seem you to see, have a lot of the hardcore wrestlers as well. ECW, what's his name, Paul, right? What's his name? Paul Heyman? No. Paul Dangerously? 
Uh, Todd Gordon, you're saying? Paulie, is that his name, Paulie? Yeah. Paulie. Paulie had the world talking. When you seen people in Atlanta, you know what they'd say? That's the real shit. <laughs> right? Yeah. And he had powerful stuff. But what happened? Too much? Yes. You understand what I mean? Yeah. But he he had it gone, mm -hmm. but he didn't know how to. Mm -hmm. See? He was a good promoter, but yeah. he just didn't know how to. Mm -hmm. See, you can't, if you give somebody a little bit of, give them a little bit, give them a little more, a little more, mm -hmm. a little more, you keep going. Mm -hmm. You see, you keep bringing in more people. Mm -hmm. That's what the old man, uh, Vince McMahon done. Yeah. He always had people ready to come in for the fight the champion. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. Would you say that's the reason that uh, the Jarrett's with NWA TNA are able to, to, to keep going, even though they're just, they're doing only weekly pay-per-views, which a Who's lot of that? people, uh, Jerry and Jeff Jarrett, but what with are they, NWA TNA in, in Tennessee, they're, they're doing weekly pay-per-views. What are they drawing? Uh, I think they do sell out the arena that they use. I think they're using the fairgrounds in Nashville. How many people are they drawing? Uh, whatever the capacity is, I guess, for the building. I, as far as I know, they're, they're doing very well. Well, they're doing and, good. And they're bringing in, I guess, new people almost every week. They're That's actually, good then. Well, you got to have new people every week. I mean, you yeah. can't have the same thing. Mm. Well, these criticisms in terms of they're not able to continue the storylines yeah. because of the fact that they yeah. bring in new people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what made you decide to, uh, I guess going back, what made you decide initially in the early 80s to jump from all Japan to New Japan? Was it simply the money? No. I told Giant Baba, these people are offering me this. They mm -hmm. want me to come. Mm -hmm. Can you handle it? Yeah. He started laughing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. They're telling me this story mm -hmm. and you're laughing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because he thought I would never leave. Yes. And I left. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. But I would have never left but he just didn't know how to really treat me. Okay. You see? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the story. Yeah. How would you compare in terms of the in-ring styles the, uh, of uh, Baba and Inoki, since you've wrestled both? Their style? Yes, the style They're the same style. They both wrestle the same. Okay, because I, from, yeah. from what I've seen, Baba, because he moved so much slower, especially later no, on. No, I guess. a long time ago, the, the Baba was like this. Yes, I remember that. He was like this. Yeah. So when I wrestled him a long time ago, he was like he was, this. Yeah, like classic you know I man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, you don't see much of a difference in terms of the... Uh, no. No, okay. Okay. Um, okay, I guess another uh, different uh, set of contemporaries. Uh, how would you compare, I guess, Jumbo Suruta with Tatsumi Fujinami, if you could, in terms of their style? Fujinami? Yeah, and Fuj Suruta. Same, same. same thing, you feel, okay. They knew how to wrestle. Okay. They knew how to grab a hold and take you down and do what they want to do. Okay. See? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what made you decide to go with, uh, later on in, in 1996, you went with uh, Tokyo Pro. What made you decide to do that? Tokyo Pro? Yes. Money. Okay. Because I think you had, you, I think that was the last, uh, well actually it's never the last time, but um, you left all Japan I guess in 95 and you went with Tokyo Pro. No, I went to Giant Baba, I said, Baba, I said, when am I coming back? Mm -hmm. Baba said, um, you call Mr. Enan. And I said to him, what? I said, call Mr. Enan. I said, we have always done business ourselves. I told him something, and that was it. I walked. See, and that was it. Mm -hmm. I went with them for a year. Mm -hmm. Then I worked with uh, Tenu for a year. Mm -hmm. One with Big Japan, mm -hmm. and then they 
I worked with him for a year, and then I went back to uh, All Japan. Yeah. yeah. Well, you never say never, correct, in this business? You never say that. Yeah. I've never said I'll never do this, I'll never go yeah. back, or well, you know. Yeah. I just say, it's like one time Ole Anderson said, I'll never use Abdullah the Butcher again. And then when he called me back, you know what he says? I know what I said. <laughs> yeah. But everything changes, right? Yes. Mm. Why do you have a bald head? Um, I started balding. Uh huh? I started balding. Oh, you started losing your hair. Why did you start losing your hair? Hereditary. Why? You wasn't getting enough money? You are worried about money? You are worried about something or what? No, I, I, I actually I think it's too much junk. I, was, I guess it's, we've switched roles here in this interview. <laughs> it's now the Nick Mallard shoot interview conducted by Abdul the Butcher. <laughs> Remember something, everything changes. Absolutely. If you keep your clothes for 10 years, 20 years, it always comes back. Yeah. All this stuff that we're seeing today, the wrestling, the stuff, we have seen it a long time ago. Yeah. But it's just the new generation mm. who, it's just a matter of time that the wrestling will come back strong again. Yeah. You're going to see all these little small towns mm. coming back. Yeah. See? So you see the era of the territories coming back? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, how did you adapt to the style of um, Big Japan, and what is your feeling on the deathmatch style with the barbed wire, the glass, the fire? Something that I guess you don't... Really I don't stop nobody from making a living. Whatever they want to do with their body, that's their... I've been in uh, light bulb matches, mm -hmm. but I don't go into the light bulbs. <laughs> I can pick them up and throw them in there. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to throw me in. You're not going to bump for that now. You're not going to throw me in the tax. Yeah. I'll throw you in there. <laughs> See? Okay. Mm -hmm. You're not a big fan, I guess, of the barbed wire matches, correct? No. I don't know. One mistake, you're, it, could, it could mess you up. Yeah. See? Do you think that uh, the um, match between Sabu and Terry Funk in ECW that they did the Born to be Wired barbed wire match, I don't know if you recall, they both got wrapped up in the barbed wire and it became very dangerous. Do you think that was obviously a mistake they made or do you think it was a... Uh, to me, if I know Terry, it wasn't a mistake. Okay. <laughs> they, yeah. they were in the ring in Japan when the ring caught on fire. Yeah. Do you know I mean? Yeah. If they're lucky that they got all alive. Yeah. Because if the wind would have went another way, mm -hmm. it would have, the smoke alone would have smothered them. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think is the reason that, uh, I guess we'll talk about some current topics, I guess. Um, what do you think is the reason that Atsushi Onita hasn't been able to regain the success that he had with FMW? He hasn't been able to do that again. Who? At, uh, Onita. Without the, he, the success he had with FMW, he can't, he, every time he tries to start a new promotion, he can't get it going the way it used to be. Because he already did it. Mm -hmm. When Terry Funk and Onita was partners against myself and, and Kamala, mm -hmm. we packed the place. The people went crazy. They loved the match. Yeah. They still love Onita. Yeah. But the people seen what? Mm -hmm. Big Japan people seen what? Everything. Yeah. They seen it all. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. How many times can you throw a guy into a light bulb? Mm -hmm. You can't come back the next week and throw him into another. You can't have five light bulbs up there and come back again and you got 200. So do you feel the secret is kind of, I guess, teasing and just showing just enough to get the fans to come back? What do they do with a movie? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what do they do with a movie? Yeah, they They, they give you a certain amount, Yeah. then they cut it. Yeah. Then they come back with number two, or number three, or number four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does Salone do? With Rocky one, yeah. Rocky two, Rocky three? Yeah. Or, huh? yeah. See, so, yeah. you don't give the people everything. Mm -hmm. It's like if you, if you gotta, when you go with a girl, mm -hmm. you do what? Okay, you I don't know. You want her so bad, yeah. you, you, you buy her gifts. Yeah. You open the door for her, sure. right? Yeah. Her birthday and yeah. her Christmas days and all these days you give her gifts. Then as soon as that you that you get married to her, yeah. right? 
no more gifts, no more <laughs> <laughs> anything, yeah. <laughs> and this guy's going to sleep on me. Um, He's starting to yawn. <laughs> um, Are you what, paying him good or what? I don't pay him, so. <laughs> oh. Okay. I'm concerned. <laughs> Um, as long as he, as long as the camera doesn't go off, that's fine. Uh, did you hear what he said? <laughs> he said? He don't care. As long as the camera doesn't go off, he don't care if you drop dead. As long as the camera keeps moving, <laughs> <laughs> then he'll play. No, then no, he'll no we can't. No, he's no, he's no. This is our, no, our, We need our cameraman. Um, now, what is uh, what is your what are your feelings on the concept of uh, the Wrestle One shows that Muda was trying to do? With the kind of mixing that sports entertainment, trying to bring that more into Japan. You mean the shoot? Uh, you wrestled at the Tokyo Dome against Masaki Sataki, the former K1 kickboxer. Yeah. 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 I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Okay. I got paid. You gotta love it then. <laughs> That's the key. No, but uh, specifically what I mean is, for example, with uh, when you, on that Tokyo Dome show, it was, I believe, the lowest paid attendance. In history, I think they only drew about 2,000. When's that? The Tokyo Dome. This is January of this year. I wasn't there. Okay. I was not there. Okay. You mean in the Tokyo Dome? Yes. You wrestled Sataki twice in November of last year and January of this year. Yeah. Okay. But we had more than 2,000 people. Okay. You see, we never did wrestle in the Tokyo. We never wrestled in the Tokyo Dome. Okay. We wrestled in uh, Yokohama Arena. Yeah, okay. that was packed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wrestled in three, no, three times? Two times, I think. Well, three times? I remember two, and again, I mentioned Tokyo Dome. I know it wasn't a lot. It wasn't what it was supposed to no. be. I think that was because Hogan, uh, Who? kind of Hulk Hogan bailed at the last minute, I believe. It no, was. but that wasn't at the Tokyo Dome. Okay, I was speaking of the That Tokyo was at, an, at another place. Okay. You see. Mm -hmm. That was for... That was Muda. I think Muda was promoting. Yeah, I'm talking about yeah. Muda promoting yeah. the Wrestle One shows. Yeah, that's when they had uh, I think Goldberg, right? Yes, they had Goldberg on the shows. No, they did more than two thousand people now in the Tokyo Dome. It might have been five, but I remember it was a very no, low paid attendance. That. They in uh, Tokyo, not Tokyo Dome. In the, in the Budokan. Mm -hmm. The lowest house of history what they ever had, and I was not on the card. Okay. That was nine thousand people. The place holds, I think, eighteen or twenty thousand mm -hmm. people. Okay. Maybe that's what you're talking about. Okay. You see. Uh, all right. Uh, what are your memories of? Uh, you finally got to wrestle KG Mood. I guess that was something that both of you wanted to do for a while. You wrestled him in a six-man tag, though. It was. Uh, what did you think of the? concept of the uh, three faces of uh, Muda, where he wrestled three times on the show with three different characters. You remember Bruiser Brody? Yes. You remember he wrestled? Red River Jack, yeah. <laughs> it always comes back, yeah. It always comes back, absolutely. Okay. Same routine? Yeah. Uh, are you disappointed that you've never wrestled uh, Muda in singles? No. No? Okay. I just want to be what I am. Okay. Let him be up there. Okay. Just keep me down here. Well, I meant I've been around 42 years. I'm very tickled to death. <laughs> you understand what I mean? I'm going to be around a little longer. Yeah. As long as I have my health and everything goes right. Yeah. You see? Yeah, absolutely. Don't stop without me, and without you. <laughs> there's no show without any cameras. That's right. That's right. And if it's, uh, tonight's card, there's no show without Abby. <laughs> no, I mean seriously, look at the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to. Get out. This is just between you and me because the rest of the boys aren't here. But I just want to get out of here. Okay. Um, I gotta be on a plane at four o'clock in the morning. I don't know what time I get out of this place. Oh Jesus! That's like right. you've never been to one of the Jack Stafford shows. <laughs> 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 All right, see you later. Um, this is actually an unusual question to ask, but uh, you've been in, in several, I guess, unusual matchups or pairings. Uh, I guess just specifically in war, Tenru had a what's considered a very unusual style of, style of booking where you put different types of wrestlers together as teams. What did you think of that? Is it, some, is it an old concept you've seen previously? 
Just rehashed? Something to draw. Something to draw, okay. Something different. Okay. Um, what, what are your memories of your match with uh, Takata for Tokyo Pro? Takata? Yeah, Shoot Fighter. Takata, yeah. In purple trunks. Yeah, he used to chew gum when he would come to the ring with the hood. No, I don't know if he did it then, but I know he did it for his retirement match. He was chewing gum on the to the ring, but okay. No, I, I, I just, if, if uh, you had a hard time adapting to that style since it was such a clash of styles between I can go with any style. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, good answer, I guess. I make you go to my style. Absolutely. Uh, something I definitely want to make sure to touch upon is the uh, lawsuit you had with WCW. Uh, over the over getting paid for the Chamber of Horrors match at Halloween Havoc '91, uh, what exactly happened? They I lost. You lost the case. Okay. In my opinion, I think I was sold out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, what about uh, the incident with uh, a Buddha Singh, who's now known as Balls Mahoney? Uh, you got burned with fire. He was doing uh, trying to do something where he burned you. What exactly happened there? He burned me. Why well, I don't know. I'm just saying. Word I still got it. Really. Okay. <laughs> you see it? That's it. I got the burn. <laughs> what do you think? What happened? I still no, got the scar. I'm just. What did he screw up? Basically, is uh? where I'm getting at. At what point did he screw up? What did he do? Wrong? What did he screw up? Are you trying to say that Rossum is? Uh... <laughs> is that what you're trying to say, sir? I'm not trying to insult anyone. I'm going to plead the fifth burned. this time. He burned me for real. I'm not saying he didn't legitimately burn you. I, I didn't take black paint and put it on there. That's, that's burn. <laughs> no. Seven degree burns. I had to go to the hospital for... Okay. Did he, do you feel he didn't know how to blow fire? Is that the... Is that I don't know what he was doing. He set me on fire. Did you speak with him afterwards? <laughs> speak with who? With uh, Buddha Singh Balls Mahoney. Did you speak with him afterwards? I told him you burned me, kid. Okay. What do you want me to say? Give well, me I, okay. In other words, we, all right. If Did I you guys ever? If I wouldn't have turned my head, I'd have been blind today. That's what part for it was coming. Uh, did you guys ever bury the hatchet over that, or? Sir, everybody does what in time. Mm -hmm. Makes mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess rookie mistakes. What do you mean working mistakes? Okay, he'd been in the business a couple of years. I'm sorry. So what are you talking about working? Okay, I'm just... He set me on fire. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's not much else to say on that. Uh, <laughs> this has got to be one of the most interesting in, uh, interviews I've ever conducted. <laughs> um, <laughs> because Abdullah the Butcher is never going to knock his business. No, how he makes a living. Like you see what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is another unusual question, but how would you compare Kamal number one and two? Who? Kamal, uh, Harris, yeah. the former Sugar Bear Harris, with Ben Peacock. How would you compare them? Number one is a professional. Okay. Ben Peacock is what? Professional. He's a copy. Oh, he's a copy. Okay, yeah. Okay. I think there were like three or four different Kamals at one I just time. knew two. Oh, there's only two. Okay. Just like there's only one Abdul the Butcher. That's right. There, okay. there will only be one Abdul the Butcher. Absolutely. Uh, were you flattered by the idea that, uh, in, in, I think it was actually for All Japan Women's, when they used midget wrestlers, they had a, a, a midget version of Abdul the Butcher. Somebody was supposed to be Abdul the Butcher? Yeah, it was a midget version. I'm glad. Okay, that, that's what I... If you can take a midget and make him Abdul the Butcher, it's more par. Every time somebody says Butcher, they say, oh, <laughs> Yeah. They made him a butcher, Abdul yeah. the Butcher. Yeah. It makes me stronger. It was a firecracker death match. That's right. <laughs> it, it was an interesting match to say the yeah. least. <laughs> he was, I think he was facing a little great Muda. <laughs> uh, um, how would you compare, I guess, the, um, the territories of yesteryear to the current wrestling environment? It's all the same. It's all the same? All the same. Okay. Way back, guys used to wrestle, grab a hold. Mm -hmm. they, they could grab one hold and be there for 20 minutes okay. and get the people going. Today it's all different. Mm -hmm. 
do you feel that they, uh, nowadays they don't really know, without knocking anyone, um, do you feel that they've, the art of telling a story is somewhat lost on the newer generation? A lot of them don't know how to tell a story. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm getting at. The yeah. key is you have to learn how to tell a story. Yeah. See? Yeah. If you have a tooth thing, you say, oh, ooh. Yeah. I gotta go to the doctor. Then you gotta do what? The doctor says, well, you gotta pull it out. Yeah. Tell the story. Yeah, absolutely. The name of the game about the wrestling business, you have to tell a story. Yeah. You gotta go from A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know how to do that. Why were you and uh, Sabu only given three minutes in Tokyo Pro for your match? Three it was minutes? like a three minute time limit, actually. Three minute time limit? Yeah. But uh, I know, as unusual as that is, yeah. Oh, it was longer than that. Well, yeah. the brawling and everything went about six, seven minutes, but I remember the, the yeah, time limit was... You see, they made a mistake and they rung the bell. Oh, I see. And we had, to, we had to keep going because if I would have cut it then, the people would have booed us out of there. Really yeah, good. absolutely. Absolutely, you had to keep yeah. going. Yeah. yeah. But it was a hell of a match. Oh, absolutely. Did you, see it? did you like it? Yes, I did. I enjoyed it. So did you buy the tape? Yes, I did. Or did somebody give it to you? Okay, I traded with someone. <laughs> oh, come on, what do you want me to say? Watch his promoter. See, he's a promoter too. You gotta watch these guys. Oh, Come my on. goodness. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on Abdul the Butcher's hit list now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> and don't threaten me, please. Did you threaten me, sir? No, I did not. In any uh, way, shape, or form. Are you sure you did not threaten me? I did not threaten you in any way, but shape, or form. You're gonna do what to me? Show your respect. All right then. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, are you laughing at me, sir? No, 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 no. About the situation. So why are you laughing? About the situation. Why do you have a grin on your face? I'm enjoying myself. Okay, me too. Okay, Go great. ahead, finish it up. All right, I want to finish this up. All right. Um, what mistakes do you feel Pedro Martinez made with the NWF promotion? He made money. But he didn't last. He his... made money, sir. Okay. He cleaned up. He cleaned up. And just, so he got out, basically, you're saying? He made money. He made money and left? He made money. Okay. Pedro, always, Pedro Martinez always made money. Okay. You know Johnny Powers? Yes. Well, I don't know him personally, but you I know him. You know how powerful Johnny Powers is now in, in Canada? He's a big man in Canada. Big man. Yeah. Believe it. Uh, okay, well. That's we, it? Yeah, that's it. And thank you very much. This has got to be one of the most entertaining shoot interviews. What do you mean I've entertaining? Ever. What are you talking about, entertaining? One of the best interviews I've ever done. Well, say that then. Nobody say. I enjoyed it, so that's why it's entertaining to me. Okay, that's it. Okay. You're positive. Absolutely. You're sure? Without a doubt. Well, thank you very much. Sit down and we'll take the. We'll shake hands. Okay. Put your chair closer. Oh, okay, put it closer. It's always a pleasure. What you say your name was again, sir? Uh, Nick Knowledge. What national is your name? Uh, well, I'm a mix. Mix of what? Italian, Puerto Rican, Spanish, and other things. What about black? I don't have black on you, as far as I know. What are you talking about? I think we all do. You say Puerto Rican? And oh. you don't have no black in there? What? I'm sure it's... What did you say? <laughs> it was... Oh. Oh. What?
York, thank you for your support of Athena the Venture for 42 years. The New York people are the greatest of supporting Abdullah. Thank you. And I would like to give a big third thank you to Louie tonight for being man enough to stick around after 11 o'clock to take on the greatest man that's ever stepped in the ring, Abdullah the Butcher. And at this time, ladies and gentlemen,
Oh, <laughs> 